Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone, and I just want to start with a quick prayer. Just thank you, Father, for the day. Thank you for my brothers and sisters, and thank you, Holy Spirit, for enlightening us on this trail that we call our walk in you. And just thank you, Jesus, for your love and your guidance in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> And I just declare over you health. And I just declare over you goodness. And I just declare over you righteousness this morning. And I just thank God for you. I thank God for this time. I, I thank God that I can come before you. And we have a lot to be hopeful for. We have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot. We can just step out in faith and release into other people's lives. And uh, this, is, this is more or less a continuation of yesterday about doubt, but with a twist, that we can release faith in the face of doubt, and that we can think outside the box on these things. I, b I believe that God in this season of restoration is calling for us to release our faith that uh, we can release our faith, our, faith, our faith in the face of doubt. Say that ten times real fast and see what happens. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, at any rate, I want to rejoice before the Lord this morning because uh, I had my own crisis of faith this morning. And I don't know where the enemy come from. I was just reading the Word and bam, it smacked me hard upside my head. And uh, actually, I was reading in John 1, verse 1, and I quote that scripture all the time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. I guess that's verse 2. But I, always, I like to release that over myself, because it is a faith builder. But this morning, when I spoke that over myself, I had a... A twinge of doubt all of a sudden came in. I started reading in my ESV study Bible. That's this book right here. That's the ESV study Bible. Notice how it says Jesus is Lord. Just in case the Lord makes give it away to somebody. I want them to be able to take it and know that Jesus is Lord. But I had a crisis of faith this morning in it. And uh, I got asked the question, how do I know? And why do I believe in Jesus? How do I know about Jesus? And how do you know? How do I know? It's not just a God, like the Jehovah Witnesses. And when that hit me, I mean, it was clear as a bell. It was like it hit me upside my head, and uh, I just felt all of a sudden, like you know, where am I? I'm in confusion. Well, I collected myself real fast and and bound that thought. You know, it's just to cast our, our, <laughs> bring our thoughts into captivity into the obedience of Christ. So I did that real fast, but that didn't that didn't shake for a while. It took a while to shake that off this morning. I have no doubts about who my Jesus is. He lives bold in me, and I can give you an answer because all because I'm not the same as I was two years ago. That's how I know Jesus is real. I know it's real because he speaks to me. He tells me he loves me. I can go on and on about that, but I don't have enough time this morning because I do have to get ready for work today. But uh, fighting that crisis of faith, that doubt that, that tried to creep in, I mean, maybe the Lord was trying to teach me a lesson. He hasn't, he hasn't uh, spoken to me on this subject, and I'm sure he will sometime during the day. It'll pop up. But... Uh, I have no questions in my mind now who Jesus is. He is the Lord God Almighty, and He is the great I Am. And at that name, we will all bow. We will all confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. And uh, anyhow, when you, when you have doubt pop up concerning your faith, you need to turn around and uh, speak faith towards it. This is my faith and I command you in the name of Jesus to leave <laughs> and uh, we just need to release faith in the in the face of doubt 
And uh, here's a definition of release. Because on my bed this morning, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. You know me, I'm, I'm pretty scrambled. <laughs> I guess that God makes scrambled eggs too. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, back up this morning. Well, actually back up for the past couple of days. I've been going through many trials and growth spurts and, and all kinds of good things coming my way that you know a lot of people would say, oh, I don't like this. But uh, it gives us a chance to get closer to the Lord. And one of the words the Lord has been speaking to me the past couple of days is release. And I want to read something to you. Uh, here not too often ago, I said that, that I wrote that the three R's are uh, restora restoration, reconciliation, and repair. But the Lord's uh, changing my thinking processes here because He's saying release restoration. And reconciliation release faith so restoration can happen that leads to reconciliation those things walk with each other they hold hands they're 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 up related to each other and uh, definition and this morning on the bed I heard the word release again and uh, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I, I just told the Lord this morning when I got out of bed because that was I was hearing a bunch of things, but and that was one of the things I recall hearing. And I just basically told the Lord, I know that You'll give me a word sometime this morning before I do this video blog. And uh, anyway, uh, definition of release is allow or enable to escape from confinement, set free. The action or process of releasing or being released. And that's a good word for us. And we need to take those words and, and apply them to our lives. And I just got that off of Google. When I want to know what a word, when I want a definition for a word, I go to Google. It's, 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 uh, <laughs> I guess I, I guess I'm throwing I'm, I'm throwing a bone their way. I'm advertising for them, but it's a good place to look something up other people might use Bing I don't know I don't happen to like Bing myself but you know that's getting off the subject and uh, anyhow uh, when we have something that causes us to start coming into doubt because doubt in itself isn't a sin a thought is not a sin it's it, it only becomes a sin when we when we begin to put action to it. When it becomes a verb, it becomes sin. When it's when it's passive, you, you have a chance to overcome it, wrestle it down and put it put it down and defeat it. When it starts rearing its ugly head like it did with me this morning. I didn't waste any time starting to struggle against what I was hearing and once what I was feeling. God doesn't hold that against us. It doesn't make us lousy Christians. What makes us lousy Christians is when we refuse to acknowledge His Lordship in our life. When we choose to hold on to those things and, and do it in our own strength. Because we can't. And uh, <laughs> my first scripture is Hebrews 10, 38 and 39. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. Let me ask you a question. Are you walking in faith? I mean, do you live by faith? The just shall live by faith. Or are you living by what you can see around you? Are, are you overcoming those things that can bring doubt in your life? Or are you sitting down and, and, and spending days in front of the news going, yes, 